Hi everyone, a warm welcome to all of you. This is Deepti Korane, country head for India and looking after the India operations. I have started my journey with HR Success Talk as a volunteer and currently looking after the complete operations of HR Success Talk. HR Success Talk, it's not just a community, but it's a journey of nine years for us, which gives us opportunities to take different initiatives. These initiatives helps us helped us in building our learning ecosystem which is our webinars HR awards we have a YouTube channel a huge presence on social media uh, we have a designing vertical HR blogs verticals we also have a HR team de dedicated to take care of our volunteers we are also planning to expand the HR success talk in different states of India today I would like to welcome Charlotte who is our country head UAE for HR success talk and also mentoring our first UAE webinar on leadership. In your leadership journey, you must have developed leaders. So how do you identify people that can be developed as leaders? Identifying people for leadership, it takes a lot of time and effort. And so in the past, I've experienced uh, identifying people for leadership. The main thing that you have to have in mind is that ask yourself the question whether, that, whether this person that you have identified to develop as a leader have the right attitude and character. Because skills and abilities can be easily learned. You can be trained for that. Although leaders are not born, they are made, and all of us can learn leadership skills. It's important that at the beginning, the person has the right attitude and character to develop to become a leader. Because if the person doesn't have the right uh, values, the right character or attitude, it's, it will be difficult for you to influence them to do the right thing. So it's very important to know whether this person possesses the right set of values that would make up for a good leader. In the past, I, I have uh, my fair share of failure when it comes to identifying people. Not because the, pe the people that I've identified to become a leader were, were bad, but because I didn't invest much time before I entrusted the role. I could have done a better job in investing more time to know them, to see the gap where uh, the problem lies before I entrusted the role. And so look for people that can inspire and motivate others, assess their values, whether they have integrity and they are honest, they are trustworthy and dependable. Look also on how they approach things in terms of uh, problem solving, in terms of managing people. Are they good with their people skills? Do they have the right communication skills? Do they um, interact diplomatically with people? Do they know how to develop others? And also, are they creative and innovative? So, more than the abilities, I would say, I would go for the attitude, the core values, the, the, the principles and the character of that person. So I believe you have to start with that. If they have that, that already, it's easy to train them for other skills, for other knowledge, for other things that they ought to do. Because you have to have people that 
have the ability to empower other people, to inspire other people. So if they don't possess the right kind of values, then it will be difficult for them to lead in the future. So once you identify the people that you want to develop as a leader, what do you do? So the first thing is provide exposure. Find time and find an opportunity where you can um, expose them for good leadership. So of course you have to, if you are developing leaders, you have to be able to demonstrate and lead by example. So you yourself have to be a good leader so that people that you are developing can emulate you and uh, set the example for them expose them for opp opportunities where they can nurture or develop their leadership skills another thing is that you need to provide them roles and responsibilities when you provide them the roles and responsibilities, they become mature, they become accountable, they become reliable and dependable. A lot of good values or skills that can be developed when you assign tasks to them. Another thing that you can do is provide a support system in place. So, for example, you have agreed with this person that you want to develop as a leader, that checklist probably and you would say the first thing that you have to do is improve on your communication skills you have to uh, once a week um, find time to read or go to a conference or attend this webinar you know there there is a specific structure that you have to put in place so that both of you can track where this uh, development is heading. You spend time with this person, you allocate resources if needed, and of course you have to give your, your time by mentoring or coaching the person that you want to develop. So developing people takes time and effort. It's a tedious job, but it's actually fulfilling when you see the results. Another thing uh, that you want to do when you develop people is that you provide a feedback. You provide constructive criticism. So for those people that are working under you, you provide them guidance. So say, for example, you assign them roles and responsibilities and they fail in certain areas. You have to be honest to provide the feedback that I've noticed that you have done this and this is not the way it should be done. It should be done this way. But you provide a constructive feedback so that that person knows which area uh, he or she is lacking and then she can improve on that. And then of course you also provide time where you can appreciate the contribution or appreciate the achievement of this person so you have to provide rewards and so when you do this it's a, it's, it's a continuous cycle so it's a never-ending process if you really want to develop a person as a leader it, it doesn't end at the time when you know employment ceases so it, that is the kind of leadership that you want to do because when you do that, they will just continue doing the same thing to other people and they will just pass the baton to another. And that's uh, the cycle of leadership that you want to cultivate. The role of human resources in terms of developing leaders is, is critical. Since HR practitioners knows how to do training need analysis, so in terms of developing the hard skill and the soft skills of, of a leader, you can start off by allowing these people to take training need analysis and 
if you are a nature practitioner, you know how to undertake that. And you will be able to identify where their gap is and where, where they are in their skills. And you will be able to coach them and guide them where they should be going and what are the things that they need to do. So by identifying the gap, in their in 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 their hard skills in their soft skills you will be able to pinpoint the areas where they need development another area where HR practitioners can be of help in terms of developing people is personality development as I've mentioned earlier it's very important that, that those people that have that are potential for good leadership must possess the core values, the attitude, the character that is befitting a leader. And so HR practitioners can ask these people to do some personality uh, traits test. There are also leadership skills tests. So in, by, by doing those behavioral assessment, by doing those leadership assessment you will be able to identify what they are lacking and you will be able to complement them with training with um, coaching with mentoring so this is where the role of HR comes into play In leadership, it is important to lead by example, give your people opportunities, exposures to different roles and responsibilities, guide them in identifying their improvement areas and support them in learning new things and become better. If we want to build thriving teams, we have to provide them a sense of autonomy because trust is an element of leadership so if we trust people we provide them that kind of autonomy that they can do uh, what they love to do they can implement things on their own you just need to provide guidance and let them do the, their work because that is when they feel that they are really empowered being transparent and open you need a good communication structure in place it will deepen the relationship of the members of the team with each other and that will create a, you know the cohesiveness of the team another is we have to in consider peer-to-peer -peer conversations so you allow them to interact with each other because that is where the relationship is built each member of the team to be able to grow and innovate it's an avenue where they can learn from each other. It's an avenue where they can help one another for them to collaborate with one another. Another way is to learn how to celebrate success. So if there's a specific milestone that the team have achieved, as a leader, we must be able to celebrate it with them, appreciate them, reward them, provide them incentives. This will serve as a motivator for them and it will increase their engagement. It, it will increase their dedication to their role or to their job. It Leadership derailers are those things that hinder you to progress as a leader so it's blocking your way to success there are so many things out there that could derail you from becoming a good leader one of which is lack of emotional intelligence and if we are not aware of our own um, weaknesses then it will be difficult for us to manage other, other people. Say for example, in terms of emotional intelligence, we are not aware of our hot buttons. So if there are things that tick us off or things that annoy us or that easily anger us, if we do not understand ourselves and we don't know 
uh, what to do in those typical situations then of course people around us will experience emotional outbursts so these are the things that we need to be aware of of ourselves so knowing ourselves fully would help us understand better how to cope with these leadership derailers another thing is lack of vision and clarity you will empower them you will inspire them to follow the same vision so if you don't have a clear picture of what you want to achieve what your business target is what is your objective in going towards that direction you don't have a purpose you don't know your why then people will be confused there's so much ambiguity in in whatever you do so it's not laser focused so everything that you do has to be aligned towards a specific vision a specific goal another is it's also related to emotional intel intelligence is the lack of trust it's because of what happened to them in the past and so when we, we are having difficulty trusting people every single time you will be suspicious every single time you will micromanage because you don't trust your people you don't trust their abilities and it will lead to a lot of problems in, or conflict in the future another de derailer is poor leadership skill have to be constantly learning a lot and that includes learning the leadership skills understanding what are the leadership traits that we ought to possess and try to incorporate that within us we also have to remember that in leadership derailers there are also weaknesses that we have that we are not mindful Let's say, for example, we have a weakness on soft skills. We lack uh, good communication skills. We have a blind spot to listening skills. So these are the areas where we need to develop ourselves. Another is critical thinking weakness. I've read in one article that a leader should have a critical mind. Having a critical mindset would allow us to come up with sound decisions. So it's important for us to develop ourselves in that area. If we still have that weakness, then we need to allocate some time how we can nurture creative thinking or critical thinking. So it will develop our analytical skills because if, if that area is, is not given attention to, then we will not be able to become decisive. We will not be able to come up with sound decisions. Another weakness is our hard skill weakness. So we have seen over the years that there are leaders that are not competent. So we need to develop ourselves in the field that is entrusted to us. It's important for us to have the knowledge and competency in order to execute our role well. Of course, there are occasions where you have to make a difficult decision. You have to possess a very good analytical skills because if you don't analyze the situation properly, then of course your decision will be also faulty. So you have to know uh, and understand or grasp the whole picture before you decide. So sound decision is a product of studying the pros and the cons and then analyzing the solution that you have for it. Well, I have experience um, taking unpopular decision when, of course, this is relating to implementing certain policies. So there are occasions where it would demand you as a leader to implement that on behalf of the organization. And no matter how unpopular that is, you have to ensure that that is not subjective 
but rather objective. The the thing that you have to to think only is whether this would benefit not only the organization but it will also benefit the employees. Whether this is well thought through, then of course it will be easier to implement if you also understand the value of, of that, the rationale behind why it is needed to be implemented. If you I believe that the future of work is like an uncharted territory and it's difficult for us to navigate. So as, as a leader or as HR practitioners, we must be able to be flexible and adopt to change. So if we are flexible, we can accommodate anything that might happen in the future. Another thing that we have to keep in mind, we have to look after the mental well-being of our people and we should also uh, look into the employee engagement and empowerment because we are still operating in a very volatile environment. We are still dependent on remote working. We need a lot of engagement and so we need to look after the people. We need to check on their mental well-being, their health, and at the same time find ways where we can empower them. Another way that we can prepare for the future of work is of course to plan ahead. So there are companies that prepare themselves for digitalization. This type of things that we can incorporate in our businesses, in our organizations. So if there are things that we can digitalize, we, can, we should uh, do that because that is where the world is going. That is the tra trajectory of where we are going. So we have to anticipate the future. We have to plan ahead. So overall, I would say you have to assess your condition because every organization is different. So you have to assess your organization, you have to assess your employees, you have to assess your customers, you have to assess your competitors. And after assessing all those factors, you will be able to see where you are. And from there, you have to plan. We can start implementing those things that we can control. Those things that we cannot control, we cannot do anything about that. But those things that we can control now, those things that we can predict, those things that we can anticipate and we can act upon, those are the things that we need to tackle now and prepare. So digitalization, revamping our processes and procedures, putting in place all those systems that can help ease out the burnout of people probably incorporating activities that would generate employee engagement. These are the things that we can prepare now for the future. So Charlotte, it was an interesting conversation with you and a pleasure to learn about your leadership journey. And I'm sure all of us are looking forward to listen to you and rest of the panelists in our upcoming webinar on leadership. See you there.